So Laura Ingram um, could not help herself in the same way that she uh, bends over backwards to defend the uber wealthy here in the U.S. She now has taken that role on for Russia as well. She's going to simp for the Russian billionaire oligarchs. Let's take a look at what she said. Even if we could expeditiously freeze every oligarch's luxury assets, would that really stop the suffering of the Ukrainian people that's happening right now? Do we think Putin's going to wake up and say next week and he's going to get up there and he's going to say, you know, that chalet and Gestapo was so important to me. I think, you think I'll call Zelensky and send the troops home. No. More importantly, we have to ask, is there a possibility that this could all backfire and make things even worse for Ukraine? Is anyone in the Biden administration even gaming any of this out, you wonder? So let's be real, as satisfying as it may be to see these 400-foot luxury liners padlocked, chasing down oligarchs is like swatting away mosquitoes when a cobra is about to strike your leg. That is not true at all. So she asked a question, hey, don't, is this really going to make it better? My answer is potentially, absolutely. Because, okay, the way Russia works is you have, you know, Putin is the leader, he is the president, and there are a bunch of oligarchs that control various industries. And they have a phenomenal amount of power and wealth. And that power is derived from Vladimir Putin's blessing. And so, but the power works both ways, obviously. Because if you have these giant industries that these people run, um, you got to keep them happy too. You have no choice if you're Putin. And so if you squeeze them out, if you seize their various yachts, seize their offshore bank accounts, seize their Italian villas and condos, uh, make it so that they can't fly out of Russia, if you crack down on them because they are part of Putin's inner circle, well, after a while, it's sort of like a divide and conquer thing. Well, you're going to have a split among the oligarchs. You may have some oligarchs that are still loyal to Putin and they blame the West for everything that's happening here. But you might have others who are like, hey, dog, before you invaded Ukraine, we were kind of chilling over here. We're billionaire oligarchs. We had a sweet deal. We had a sweet gig. We don't have to worry about anything. We don't have to worry about somebody seizing our yachts. And now all of a sudden we do. And I, that's on you. And so if you get enough of them to turn on him, well, then some things might start to happen. So now is it guaranteed to work? No, of course not. But I also think it's a good idea, even if it doesn't squeeze out Putin, I love the idea that we're laying the precedent of, like, cracking down on the obscene amounts of wealth that the oligarchs have. And also, we should start calling U.S. billionaires oligarchs, because it's a very similar thing. And the income and wealth inequality is almost as bad here as it is there. I think there are some stats where it's actually worse here. And so, I think that's more what Laura Ingram is concerned about. She's concerned about the precedent that this sets. Wait, 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 we're just going to seize billionaire yachts and houses? And bank accounts and things of that nature. Whoa, 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 whoa. What if that what if that comes here? To which I say, yummy in my tummy. I think that's awesome. Um, well, then she says, is seizing stuff gonna make it worse for Ukraine? Absolutely not. Now, I will say all of these things that I'm describing to go after Putin, the oligarchs, you know, his confidants, the government, the military. That's one thing. As soon as you start doing sanctions that hurt Russian civilians, and by the way, we are doing that, we are, well then, I'm out. I, I want nothing to do with that. Because you're doing collective punishment, you're blaming all Russians for the actions of a specific Russian or specific Russians, and there's bigotry in that, there's xenophobia in that, that's totally unfair. So now we've turned around and sanctioned a lot of the people who are literally out in the streets getting arrested for uh, protesting the war. By the way, now over 4,000 people in Russia have been arrested for protesting the war. So all these brave people who are on the side of peace, now they get punished because they happen to live on the same patch of dirt as Vladimir Putin. So is it possible that sanctions go too far? Absolutely. Have we already passed that line? Absolutely. But, you know, my concern is for 
innocent people who are bearing the brunt of this. My concern is for those who had nothing to do with it, and they're being cracked down on. My concern is not for Putin, and is not for the oligarchs. Uh, throw the book at them. Do everything under the sun. Uh, try to do a divide and conquer strategy from within the halls of power. So, we'll see. We'll see how it works out. I love those sanctions in particular. The EU is getting real tough with those particular sanctions. The U.S. has gone too far. I mean, we shut MasterCard and Visa are now out of Russia. I mean, that affects so many innocent people that have nothing to do with this. A lot of the SWIFT banking sanctions were implemented. Well, Russia immediately switched to the, the Chinese equivalent of that system. You know, there's you weren't able to use Apple Pay or Google Pay in the subway at Moscow. Why, what did those people have to do with what Putin did? Nothing, and we're doing collective punishment. So, again, it's gone too far, but notice specifically who she's simping for here. It is billionaire oligarchs. She brought up specifically yachts, as if that's the thing she has an issue with. I don't know, man. Seizing the yachts goes too far. No, seizing the yachts is making me hard. If you want to see me and Crystal Ball interview legends like Noam Chomsky, Cornell West, and more, subscribe to Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. $5 a month gets you the video version a day early. Remember, we take zero ad dollars for this podcast. Or you can sign up on Substack for free and get the audio version a day later. Link in the video description box below.